Good day and thank you for joining us. So if you can remember in past videos we had covered um, functions like straight line graphs and parabola graphs. So what's going to be happening today is we'll be looking at some examples where straight line and parabola functions are combined in the same question. So let's have a look at our first example right away. Cool. So here we have a Cartesian plane right over here with a straight line graph and a parabola present. So this is the information they give us up here. It says f of x is equal to ax squared plus q, which we obviously know is our parabola equation, and g of x is equal to mx plus c. So if you can notice that they are calling these two graphs two different things in this case, f of x being the parabola and g of x being the straight line graph. So here in the next part they refer to them as f and g. So f and g intersect at 0 and 6, which is the point A. Just underline that, so at point A, this is where f and g intersect each other. Cool, and that's 0 and 6, which is up over here. And then they also say it intersects at B, which is 3 and 0, which is down over here. So now let's have a look at what they are asking us in question number 1. Here in question number 1 it says determine the values of A, M, C and Q. So if we pay close attention to our equations we can identify where A, M, C and Q come from. A obviously comes from the parabola equation right over there. Then we they ask, also ask to find M which is over there. C which is also in the straight line graph and then Q from the parabola. So basically what we're going to end up doing is finding out these different parts of the equations ultimately helping us find the final equation of these two graphs. So let's get stuck in right away and we will look first at the graph f of x which is the parabola graph. So we're going to bring that equation down here. So, so this is going to be my apologies, this should be 1.1. So it's going to go f of x is equal to ax squared plus q. So let's have a look at our parabola graph then. So straight away what we're able to identify is that the point A is also the turning point of our parabola. And what do we know the turning point as? Q. So we can straight away say that therefore q is equal to 6. And so we can write out the equation now as f of x is equal to ax squared plus 6. So f of x is also just a placeholder for the value y. So from here onwards I'm going to be writing f of x as just y. Next up what we need to do is we only have one unknown left over in the equation which is a. Why is that? Because we have x and y which we can get from our graph and that is any other point on the graph. And any other point that the parabola passes through in this case is going to be point b which is 3 and 0. So what we're going to say is we are substituting in 3 and 0. So once we do that 0 will go into the place of f of x or y, so it's going to go 0 is equal to a, and then in the place of x we have 3, and that is squared plus 6. And so all that's left for us to do now is solve for a. So the 6 will come over, it becomes a negative 6, and then we're left with this side with 3 squared, which gives us 9, which is 9a. Now we just need to solve for a we're going to get a by itself by dividing by 9. So what you do to the one side, we do the other side, and we're left with, therefore, a is equal to negative 6 over 9 will give me negative 2 over 3. This will also help us come to our final equation, which is going to be f of x is equal to minus 2 over 3 x squared plus 6. And that is the final equation once we find the values of 
A and Q. So now what we need to do is find the values of M and C. So now that we are looking at the straight line graph, we can bring that equation down. So we are dealing with G of X is equal to MX plus C. We we'll get another color here. So we're going to look at our graph now and we know that with a straight line graph that the point at which the graph passes over the y-axis that is the y-intercept otherwise known as to us as C. So we can therefore say that C is equal to 6. And now our equation will look like G of X is equal to MX plus 6. From here onwards, we will substitute in another point from the graph. In this case, that is 3 and 0 as well. So we're going to let them know that we are subbing in 3 and 0. You can also tell them that it is B, which is 3 and 0. And so once we do that, remember 0 will go in the place of G of X or Y. So that 0 is equal to M times 3 plus 6. And so now we're going to go ahead and solve for m. The 6 comes over, gives us negative 6. This is 3m on this side. To get m by itself, we divide by 3 both sides. And so m will equal to negative 2. And so what our final g of x equation is going to look like is g of x is equal to minus 2x plus 6. And in this case, we found that m is equal to minus 2 and c is equal to 6. And so we've given them all the information we ought, they asked for, which was a, q, m, and c. And as we were doing that, we also found out the equations of the two graphs. Next, we'll be looking at 2.2, where they ask us to give the range of f. And so f is obviously our parabola, so we're going to be looking at the range which refers to the y values on the graph. So if we pay attention to the y values of the graph, we know that they move all the way from the peak over here, the apex, the top, the turning point, all the way from there, all the way downwards, right? So that means that y is decreasing in value. So that is all from the apex here, which is the turning point that we know is at the value of 6. Cool. And obviously we have our y values that are represented around the 6. So if we know that the y values are smaller than 6, right? Because remember the parabola is heading downwards. We can therefore say that y is less than and equal to 6. Because the y values start at 6 and they move down and down till less than 6. So therefore that is our range of the graph. So y is less than and equal to 6. Moving on, we move on to 2.3. So now they ask us to give the domain of G. So when they speak about domain, they refer to the X values of the graph. And in this case, they're referring to G, which is our straight line graph. So we know then that all the X values of a straight line are infinite, right? So therefore, we'll say the domain is that x is an element of all real numbers. That's just basically saying that it goes on and on forever and it has every single value of x. Next they ask us to determine the values of x for which f of x is less than 0. So if you can recall f of x is our parabola graph. So what do they mean when they're saying that f of x is less than 0? Well if you know that f of x is less than 0 below the x-axis and is greater than 0 above the x-axis. So we are looking at our line over here. Cool. So below the x-axis. So all the values that f of x, well they're asking for the values of x, so we're going to be looking at all the values over here, correct? So before we move on from this point, it's important to note that, remember, that B was 3. And obviously, both x-axes are additive inverse. X-intercepts, my bad, are additive inverse of each other. So that means C is negative 3. 
So which values of x is f of x less than 0? It's going to be all the values that are less than negative 3 and all the values that are greater than positive 3. So the way we would write that is x is less than negative 3 and x is greater than positive 3. And that basically shows them the area that we highlighted over here, right? Because those are the x values for which f of x is below the x-axis. And just like that, that is our final answer for that question. Moving on now, we'll be looking at an exam type question. So it says here, given the graph of f of x is equal to ax plus q and g of x is equal to mx plus c, not drawn to scale and intersect at the points A and B as shown below. So if you look at our graph over here, we have our straight line, we have our parabola. Once again, we have our straight line represented by the G symbol and our parabola represented by the F symbol, right? Because that's F of X over there for the parabola equation and G of X for the straight line equation. They also show us here that the Y intercept of the of the straight line graph is negative 5 and the turning point of the parabola is negative 25 which will probably end up helping us later on. So question 6.1 asks us to prove that a is equal to a quarter. So if we're just gonna give ourselves a little working space over here, let's make it over here first quickly, we're going to be doing 6.1 first. So we are going to prove that a is equal to a quarter. So in which equation is a present? That is going to be the parabola equation, f of x, right? So let's go ahead and prove to them that a is equal to a quarter, which we can only do by solving the equation of the parabola, correct? So first thing we need to write down is that we're using the equation f of x is equal to ax plus q. Sorry, this is ax squared. Let me just fix that in the question as well. And so the first thing, remember, we pointed out is that the turning point of this graph is negative 25. So that's what we're going to start off with. We're going to say that Q is equal to negative 25. And if our equation looks like F of X is equal to AX squared minus 25. So all this left us now is because a is our only unknown because we can substitute an x and y value given to us, we can find the value of a now. So which, which coordinates will we use to plug in? Let's use the x-intercept given to us here, which is 10 and 0. So we're going to let them know we are subbing in 10 and 0. And so 0 will go to the f of x slot. And then 10 will go in the place of x. So now all this left to do is to solve for a. 25 will come over, become positive. 10 squared will give me 100 times by a gives me 100a. And then to get a by itself, we divide by 100 both sides. And so therefore, because now a will be by itself, we can say a is equal to the, equi the fraction of 25 over 100 simplified will give me a quarter. And just like that we've proven that a is equal to a quarter. And now we'll just write in our equation here, here at the top so we can keep note of it. f of x is equal to a quarter x squared minus 25. Just so they know that we're keeping track of it. Next up in question 6.2, they say determine the values of M and C. So this is 6.2. Determine the values of M and C. So that refers to the M and C, which is in the straight line formula. So the only way we're going to get these values is by solving for the equation. So earlier we pointed out that the y intercept of this graph is negative 5, which is also the C value. So First, let's just write in the equation we're using. And then we can say, if we know that c is equal to negative 5, and so our equation looks like g of x is equal to mx minus 5. And all that's left for us to do now is 
substitute in any coordinates on the graph. In this case, we can also use the x-intercept over here that's given to us of 10 and 0 because that's the straight line pass through that point as well. So we'll say we're going to sub in 10 and 0, always indicating what we're substituting in. So this is 0 is equal to m in the place of x, we put 10, and this is minus 5. So now we can go ahead and solve for m. 5, negative 5 comes over, becomes positive 5, and we have 10m on this side. To get m by itself, we divide by 10 both sides, and so therefore we get m is equal to, so 5 over 10 is a half. And so we can write out our equation here that we found, which is g of x is equal to a half x minus 5. Now looking at 6.3, they ask us to prove that the x-coordinates of a is negative 8. So looking at a, what can we tell? We can tell that this is the point where the parabola crosses over the straight line graph. So this is the point of intersection between the two graphs. And we can also say that at this point, these two graphs are technically equal to each other. And so that will lead us to having the equation for this as f of x is equal to g of x. So we're saying that these two graphs are equal at that point. That's why our equation comes out like this. So remember we wrote out our equations at the top for f of x and g of x. So we'll just substitute in the equation in the place of the placeholder values. So f of x we know is a quarter x squared minus 25 that's going to be equal to g of x, which is a half x minus 5. So we can already tell that we have a x that's squared and a plain normal x. So we can probably tell that we are going to be doing factorization in this example. So to do that, we will bring all of our values to the left hand side to make it easier for us. So let's go ahead and do that. We keep a quarter x squared here the half x comes over becomes minus a half x and then the negative 5 will come over and become positive 5 so it's minus 25 plus 5 which gives me negative 20 and so this will still equal to 0 keeping the equation as an equation from this point what we want to do is we want to get rid of these fractions because it's a bit harder for us to factorize when there are fractions involved. So we need to look at what is the smallest fraction we are dealing with in this case. Is it a half or is it a quarter? In this case it will be obviously a quarter. And how are we going to get rid of that? Remember it has a denominator of 4 so what we can do is times the whole equation by 4. And that will give us x squared minus 2x minus 80 and that will still equal to 0. From here all this left for us to do is to factorize. So we can see that this is a trinomial. We'll open up our two brackets and we'll have x and x and then we'll look at what can we times together to get to negative 80 but also add together to get to negative 2. That will be positive 8 and minus 10. If I times positive 8 by minus 10, I get negative 80. And if I minus 10 from 8, I get negative 2. And so now what we end up getting is x is equal to minus 8 or x is equal to 10. And just like that, we've already proven to them now that the x coordinate of a is negative 10. Eight. So we can just finalize that by writing out a final statement over here. Therefore, the x coordinate of a is minus 8. And that concludes this example. Thank you so much guys for joining me today and I hope that this lesson has helped you to understand better the examples where they combine straight lines and parabolas together. Have a good one.